Hey, Fight fans, it's Michelle Joy Phelps, and I am joined now by Vadim Kornilov, who is the manager to um, several big name fighters, Ruslan Bravonikov, Victor Pastol, and Denis Lebedev. Um, I wanted to talk to you a bit about Denis Lebedev and what's going on with the whole WBA IBF situation. Um, I know that um, Babut Shimonov is basically trying to petition for the WBA to draw a purse bid mm -hmm. between um, or for that fight because he's, he's saying that it's becoming difficult to get him in the ring. Can you kind of explain a little bit more of what's exactly going on? Yes, uh, Mr. Rybinski and World of Boxing already came out and, uh, you know, there, there's been news that there's been an agreement reached with Gassiev. You know, the IBF has uh, mandated for the winner of Dennis uh, Lebedev and Ramirez to fight the mandatory right away mm -hmm. because there was a mandatory for Ramirez before the Lebedev fight and uh, they made a one-time exception for Ramirez to fight Lebedev with the, you know, with the condition that the winner would fight the uh, the mandatory right away, you know, within 60 or 90 days. So Mr. Rubinsky has made an agreement with the representation of Gassiev uh, to put a fight up together in uh, Moscow around October, November, you know, which is the earliest date available over there. And, um, you know, we can't fight both guys at the same time. And, you know, even considering that Dennis's base title is the WBA title, um, you know, the IBF title is important also because, you know, that's why we fought Ramirez. So we don't want to give that up. So I'm thinking we're going to have to work something out and, uh, you know, probably just fight Truman off right after um, because it's, it's impossible to fight both of them. Right. So I know that almost immediately after he won the IBF title, it seemed as though he had to pick and choose between whether it was going to be the IBF or the WBA. Um, it's sort of looking likely, right, that he may end up having to choose one or the other? I hope not, obviously. And I think the organizations have, based on precedent of other fighters, you know, I won't mention, mention names, but organizations have been very understanding of situations like this. And I don't think we're at a critical point, you know, with fighters... Uh, you know, not doing their mandatories for a while sometimes, you know, uh, um, I think this should be able to, this, this this should be something that should be worked out. I don't think this can be like a real problem where we have to give up titles, especially, you know, Dennis wants to fight both guys, you know, and I think we should just, it, it will be good for Shumanov if Dennis defends and, uh, you know, he, he still holds both titles mm -hmm. and he'll be fighting for two titles. So for sure, it, the fight's been made with Murat Gassiev and his team. As far as I know from the promoter, from Mr. Rubinsky and World of Boxing, yes. As far as I know, Contracts have been signed or just right now it's verbal? Because I know nothing's been issued and I know that's sort of why I wanted to talk to you about it because I was hearing that, I think you guys had until about, what was it, July, early July mm -hmm. to be able to make the fight with um, the Gassiev or not, in, I've yet to hear anything about it. I don't know about the contracts. I mean, I'm, uh, that's the promotional side, but uh, I know that the purse bid has been taken off. So I'm, and then, as far as I know, both sides have agreed and they've confirmed that. Okay, and this is, you said, late fall? Yes. Okay. Um, also, tonight we had uh, Victor Postol, unfortunately, was unsuccessful at defeating Terrence Crawford. You've obviously been able to spend some time with him post-fight now. How is he doing? He's doing okay. He's definitely disappointed. It's the first loss in his career. Um, you know, Crawford was the was a little quicker today. He was the stronger fighter. You know, I want to give him all the credit. He's definitely one of the best fighters uh, in the division, maybe in the world, you know, and he won uh, two to two real titles, you know, three titles mm -hmm. with, the, with the ring title. And, uh, you know, he, he did what he had to do. You know, in my opinion, uh, it wasn't what, you know, he didn't fight in the way that the pay-per-view viewers would, you know, would want to see. Um, I don't think that uh, people that ordered the pay-per-view today you know, we're happy or they want to, you know, they would want to do that again. You know, Victor doesn't have the most exciting style. We know that. But at the same time, you know, part of the goal of our team was to make it an exciting fight. And I think Victor tried his best to do that. Another fight of yours who unfortunately um, was unsuccessful was uh, Ruslan Pravonikov. I know that there's been talks of him potentially retiring. Is that true? Um, not really. You know, after the fight, he mentioned that he was a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we didn't have the best year, you know, but uh, it's a little disappointing, but I think that uh, we'll come back. You know, Ruslan, uh, he's here. He's here for the fight. He was suppo supporting Victor. We talked a couple of times, you know, this weekend, and uh, he wants to fight again. He just wants to take a, you know, a month or two off and spend time with his family. He's here with his family because, you know, the, as, as he was coming up in his career, he didn't get to see his son grow up and all of that. So I think mentally that's affecting him a little bit, and he wants to make that time back. He wants to give back to his family, but uh, he wants to fight, and he wants to uh, just wait and see what comes up. Fighting, you tend to have um, a, a pretty good roster of talent. Um, is there anybody in particular we should be looking out for? Uh, Any up and coming talent? It seems like this year shows otherwise. You know, the you know, our, it's not me. We have a team. You know, and uh, all the guys that work with me, and uh, you know, we're all partners. We're all together, and it actually. 
this year it's been tough. You know, some of some of our top guys uh, had had tough fights, and you know, some of them lost. Um, but it's not a problem, you know. I think we've achieved a lot of uh, other years. Um, we've had fight of the years. We've had, uh, you know, world champions. You know, we, we I have a couple of world champions until today. And um, right now, I think people to look out for is Dmitry Bivol, is who's one light heavyweight that I think will make a lot of buzz in the light heavyweight division. He's a WBA interim champion. He won on the Lebedev's undercard to become the interim champion in his seventh fight, um, fighting Valera. So a good fighter from. Uh, uh, Dominican mm -hmm. and uh, another fighter that's coming up I think is Rajab Butayev. Uh, he's, he's had two first round knockout wins um, in his first fights um, and I think he's going to be something that we that everybody should look out for. Bob Aram said that it, it looks as though the Eastern European guys are sort of taking over. Um, would you agree? <laughs> and we do have like Gennady Golovkin, we have um, Kovalev and several other names including your own. Yes, I think they're just a lot hungrier, you know, good school of boxing in Europe. Mm -hmm. And I think um, they're, uh, there's still a lot that they're going to do in mm -hmm. the future. Well, thank you so much, Vadim. I know you guys will want to be celebrating with family right now. So we'll talk to you later. Bye, Fight Fans. Hey, Fight Fans. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you go ahead and do so because Behind the Gloves is worldwide with our coverage. All you have to do is click this little link right here.